Okay, so following on from the Pro 101, where I replaced uh, two of these RAM chips with uh, a Pico, I've got a different calculator here. I've got the FX201P, which is a member of the family of 201, 202 and Pro FX1. They all use the same uh, processor and um, have the same programming language, obviously, and and basically the same features except that 202 has got battery backed RAM and the Pro FX1 has a card reader. Now this is the 5006 that's in the um, in the Pro 101 and also in the 202 uh, and that's what gives it the ability to have non-volatile or battery backed up RAM. This is a 201 and um, that has two of these HD 36106s and these are also 1024 by 1 bit um, RAMs uh, same footprint as the 5006 but uh, completely different internally so as I don't have a Pro 101 but I do have quite a few 201s quite a lot of them actually not working uh, I thought I'd uh, have a go at reverse engineering what the, the, the actual structure of this and what the protocol is to talk to it because I found out pretty pretty early on that it's not a simple sort of parallel RAM chip with address and data lines. It turns out it's actually 1024 by 1 bit. Is it by 1 bit? Well anyway 1024 bits with one data inline and one data outline but uh, it's organized it's got four address lines so it's organized as 16 by 64 um, but the 64 bits are clocked in and out serially and that uses a two-phase clock to clock that data in and out so it's quite unusual and it seems to only be used in this family of calculators it doesn't seem to be used anywhere else now once I'd sorted that structure out it was fairly easy to um, to write an emulator for it, which is what I've got running here. I've got a Pico running some code, which can actually trace that traffic and emulate it. Um, but I'm not really using the tracing anymore, just the emulation. And I've got a USB power here, and that goes off to um, my laptop over there, which is running a, a USB-based CLI, very similar to the Pro 101. The code that is doing the emulation is utterly different because this is a clocked serial data line so nothing like the uh, Pro 101 um, emulation but the uh, CLI I took it and based it on the one from the Pro 101 so it's similar but different. Now in this calculator as well as the chip here and this one does the memories and that one does the program so physically it's the other way around to the Pro 101. On the Pro 101 this one did the memories and there were two 506, 506s here which did the program this does the memory, that does the program. So on this one, I've got a flying lead with a CE, so I can emulate both chips with this um, Pico, which is similar to what I did on the, um, the Pro 101. I had two 5006s being emulated by the Pico. But here, we can actually look at and change and store and load both the memories and the program. So that makes this quite a lot more flexible than the Pro 101 because you can control what you're doing through memories. Uh, I haven't done that at the moment. I've got flash load and save running on here but I don't have um, commands working and the commands, the capabilities could be quite a lot beyond the Pro 101 that I did. Although now, now that I know what this is, the Pro 101, I could take the chip out on that and um, put another emulator there but I would need a second Pico to do that I think unless I use both cores to do emulation but then you don't get a CLI so a lot of the power comes from the, the USB I think but I am going to try and get it all working through the keyboard like I did on the um, Pro 101 so you'll be able to issue commands and so on from the keyboard to the calculator so you could disconnect the USB and, and just not have it there um, although it's very convenient for looking at, at things like labels and stuff like that um, so this is currently set up and running, the Pico's running. I'm going to turn this on in a minute. Now you have to power this up in a certain order, which is Pico first, then calculator, because 
even though there's two chip enables on these um, RAM chips, one of them, the one for the memories, is actually basically held low, which is active, all the time. So if you don't turn it on in that order, so that the Pico is waiting for clock pulses, you actually don't get the synchronisation between the two, um, two devices, which is a bit strange. I don't really know why that has happened. But, or why they do that, why they hold the chip enable low on one of the devices. You can always get in sync on a chip enable edge but they don't occur particularly often. So uh, I'll turn this on and what I'll also do, because you can't see the display there, I'm going to turn the lights out so that you can sort of see in shadows where I'm typing here and also the display is much more visible now. So this has got um, 10 memories, actually 11, if we go into manual mode we can store a few 4's in memory 4 and you can see the enter light comes on and a 4 over there for the memories uh, we can then store, store some 5's in 5 and then we can do an answer 4, 4's come back do an answer 5, 5's come back, now that's all being stored in, in the Pico because those chips are missing, they're not there so it's, it's simply not being stored in those chips. Um, so that's fairly straightforward. There's another memory here um, which does the memory plus type memory stuff. So if I put 456 in there and do a memory plus and then clear that and do a memory recall it comes back. Now on the USB I've got a menu there for all the commands that are available and if I do D that dumps the RAM. So this is both RAM chips. 0 to 7F is the memory RAM chip, which is this one here, and 80, 80 to <coughs> FF is this chip, and that's the one that stores the program. <coughs> but if we look at the memories to start off with, we've got all the 4s in memory 4, and if you count down it's 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Let's put some 9s in 9, and that gives us the boundaries of the memory so you can see that well let's put some in zero one zero one zero put that in zero and uh, have a look at that so you can see zeros at the top at zero and then right the way down to all the nines at four eight it starts at four eight now the memory with the memory plus and memory recall um, that one is actually stored at seven eight you can see there's two four Oh, sorry, 456 there, the 02 is um, the exponent and F1 is the uh, sign flags and something else, an F. I <laughs> don't know what that is. But anyway, <coughs> so you can see that the memories are there. There's an interesting gap from 50 down to um, 77 and there are actually five unused memories in there and by doing some synthetic programming you can go in, if you change the program once you've entered one and uh, changed the code for the memory, you can actually use those, I think. I've, I've managed to use one um, in a program, but I think also starting at 7.0 and 6.8, I think that is used as some sort of scratch pad for some of the functions, because if I do a 1 and a sign, and it gives me the sign of 1, if I now dump the memory, you can see that at 7.0 there's an F. And I don't know what that is, but it looks like it's used by the calculator. Now, I, don't, I haven't seen anything in any other memories other than, I think, the 6.8 and the 7.0 um, memories. So, I think the 5.0, 5, 5.8 and 6.0 might be available for programming, which you could do with this e expansion of of the memory and program space because you can get in there and change the program tokens um, and store those programs away so it would be possible to use those I think. Of course there's five extra memories there but using the Pico you could actually uh, store a lot more than five extra memories in the uh, flash space uh, so it would be interesting to see what's going on with that memory but if you wanted to store a lot of memory then uh, you can just use the Pico to do that and it's flash. But anyway, so that's the layout of the um, memory area and I'm decoding it on the right hand side. 
I don't think I'm doing it properly at the moment. I don't think I've got enough digits there. But anyway, I uh, have a AD code of the memories. Now, from 8-0 downwards, that is actually program space. And that's in the top chip footprint, the one closest to the display. So if we go into... Right, we'll go into program mode or write mode, clear. So that's cleared everything out. Um, it was clear anyway because we've only just started. If we now write a short program that loops, so if we do a, uh, let's do a st4 and a colon, so that's a label. And if I now dump it, you can see the keystrokes down the bottom there. Uh, that's a decode of 80 to ff. Uh, just like I did on the Pro 101. Uh, what are we doing now? If I do a 1 equals 1 plus K1 and a colon, have a look at that, make sure I've typed it in right. Yep. Uh, so we add 1 to memory 1 and then we do a go to 4 and a colon. If we look at that, so that's a basic loop just incrementing memory 1 and memory 1 we've got, we can see 0 in it at the moment. We go back to comp mode. We can now do an AC and just run that. And the dash means it's running a program, uh, the minus sign, so we can um, check and have a look. So memory one is at 32, so it's incremented 32 times. And if I keep, there we go, 69, 75, and it's just incrementing. Uh, if I refresh it, we can view the memory as it's as the programs are running, which is quite neat, you can see what's going on, you don't have to stop the program. You can also see it's not particularly fast, <laughs> not very fast at all. I do it sort of one second intervals, you can see it's managing about five or six increments a second. So the program's looping five or six times a second, which not exactly um, blistering speed. So I've also got here. Um, so I've got slots so I can load programs in. Um, that's uh, very similar to the Pro 101. Um, you can you can label the slots. There's if I print all the slots out, there's 250 slots exactly the same as the Pro 101. Because I'm running on the same sort of um, so, well, I'm running on the same Pico, same amount of flash. I haven't decoded the keystrokes there yet. This is sort of well, it's not even half finished, I'd say, this code, because there's a lot more features that can be added in, uh, because we've got the memories. Um, what else? That's about it, really. But, uh, yeah, I've uh, sorted out the protocol. That's on a GitHub repository. The Pro 101 information and the uh, 201 and 202 is on the GitHub repository. And um, what I'm going to do now is, is enhance the code. And I'm also going to obviously design a PCB very similar to the Pro 101 I think which will sit in here uh, we'll have a flying lead or a soldered lead probably this is one that plugs into a socket uh, over to the other footprint so that I'll have the same arrangement sort of here whereas on the 101 it was down here uh, with a USB cable probably doing the same thing coming out here through the uh, charging socket because uh, there's no other way of getting it out of the case, really. So uh, that'll be in the next step. Design a board to put all this on a circuit board that will sit in there. And then uh, I can put the case back together again and get it in the same form fa factor as the original uh, calculator. This extender interposer is just so that you can probe with a scope or whatever you need over here, the tracing with the Pico, and also operate the keyboard and see the display at the same time. It's, it's not really possible to do that with the uh, calculator put together. Um, I've also put the um, pin headers and sockets on the edge connector, so it's no longer that very delicate ribbon cable. It's um, headers, pin header, pin sockets. So yeah, um, there's tracings here and erasing slots and things like that, but it's all very similar to the Pro 101 and all sort of just housekeeping for the main feature which is the dump of RAM at the moment. So I'm going to add commands to that and uh, get the thing working as I did with the Pro 101.